In the past 30 years, the Soviet Union has progressed from a war-ravaged nation with a military capability greatly inferior to that of the United States to a point today where it has achieved a rough strategic parity with us and is now striving for military superiority. A recent Library of Congress study concludes that the Soviet Union alone among all countries in the world today has sufficient strength to challenge America militarily in many areas of mutual interest overseas and bring power to bear on our homeland. One major factor that has allowed the Soviets to make such rapid strides is their huge investment in military research and development. Today, they are turning out weaponry of a quality generally comparable to that of any other nation in the world. Achievement of world technical superiority is a national goal which has been echoed by every Soviet leader since Lenin. In 1948, Stalin stated that the USSR will achieve technical superiority over the capitalist nations of the world. And this goal has not been abandoned. Each year since 1970, the Soviets have spent more for development of new weapon systems than the United States and are currently investing approximately 25% more than we are. This investment could allow them to achieve superiority unless we support a dynamic research and development program of our own. In reviewing Soviet intercontinental strike forces, the Library of Congress has noted that over the last 10 years, the Soviet Union has added to its force the equivalent of the entire U.S. ICBM force in numbers of launchers. This amounts to three times the nuclear payload. They currently have about 1,600 ICBMs as compared to our 1,054. Their currently deployed force consists primarily of five types of ICBMs developed during the 1960s. Their older systems are being replaced with four new, more advanced ICBMs developed in the 1970s. Three have demonstrated multiple independently targeted re-entry vehicles, MIRV, which allows their several warheads to be placed on separate targets. Two of their systems use a launch technique that allows their silos to be reloaded in a relatively short time. One of the missiles is probably being developed as a land mobile system, which, if deployed, will add to their force survivability. Despite this massive investment in force modernization, there are indications from various sources that the Soviets are continuing with the development of even newer and better strategic ballistic missiles. Their medium range and intermediate range ballistic missile force, which can now launch about 600 missiles, is also being improved by the development of a new, sophisticated, land mobile IRBM that carries a MIRD payload. In the second element of their strategic triad, submarine-launched ballistic missiles, the Soviets surpassed the United States in the number deployed in 1974. And in mid-1976, have about 800 missile launchers on some 60 nuclear-powered submarines. They do not have MIRV-capable SLBMs. However, their biggest submarine missile can deliver a warhead to a range of 4,200 nautical miles. This allows them to operate at greater distances from our coast and complicates our problem of anti-submarine warfare and missile launch detection. The Soviets have placed less emphasis on manned bombers. They have over 200 long-range bombers in their inventory or about one-third as many as the United States Air Force. This strategic bomber force is made up of the turboprop-powered Bear and the all-jet Bison. Both are configured for air-to-surface missiles or gravity bombs. A vastly superior new intercontinental bomber, the Backfire, has been deployed in their nuclear strike force. Even without refueling, it could reach targets over much of the United States. The Library of Congress study 
indicates that the Soviets have whittled away our overwhelming strategic lead and have now surpassed the United States in the total number of strategic delivery vehicles. In general, our strategic weaponry is considered somewhat more sophisticated than the Soviets. However, they are actively striving to overcome our current technological edge. In the area of strategic defense, the Soviets have developed the most extensive and expensive air defense force in the world. They operate over 5,000 early warning and ground control intercept radar sites. The Soviet fighter interceptor force, dedicated to home defense, is composed of some 2,700 aircraft, as compared to about 400 interceptors in the United States. And their force is being modernized by the introduction of such aircraft as the Mach 3 Foxbat, a high altitude interceptor reconnaissance fighter, introduced first in the late 1960s. We expect the Soviets to deploy a new defense version of the swing wing flogger, armed with four air-to-air -air missiles and an internal gun. In the post-1980 time frame, an entirely new interceptor is expected to go operational. A significant portion of this force is protected by hardened aircraft shelters, and this holds true for their tactical fighters as well. From the standpoint of surface-to-air missiles for home defense, the Soviets have nearly 12,000. The United States has none dedicated to this mission. They have four types of SAMs deployed at fixed positions in the most critical areas of the Soviet Union. They range from early models, which literally ring Moscow, to newer road transportable systems capable of intercepting both low-flying and extremely high-flying supersonic aircraft. It is readily apparent that the Soviets have developed a massive capability for strategic defense and are actively developing new weapons to ensure continued modernization of this force through future years. Regarding the Soviet general purpose forces, it may be stated that with the sole exception of helicopters, the Soviets have a significant numerical superiority in all major elements of ground, naval, and tactical air forces and they are continuing to upgrade their capabilities across the board. Their medium tank is comparable to the best U.S. tank, and they recently began production of a new medium tank. They are introducing new self-propelled artillery to replace towed artillery, thereby improving operational flexibility. In addition to large numbers of artillery rockets, the Soviets have deployed tactical missiles and rockets for battlefield operations. These include surface-to-surface -surface unguided rockets and guided missiles that have a range from 165 to 500 miles. One of the more important trends in force improvement has been the development of five mobile surface-to-air systems for defense of ground forces against air attack during fluid battlefield situations. These include the SA-4, designed to intercept medium to high altitude intruders. The mobile SA-6. The SA-8. SA-9. And the shoulder-mounted SA-7 for defense against low-flying aircraft. These mobile surface-to-air missiles are complemented by a four-barrel, 23-millimeter self-propelled anti-aircraft gun. Together, they form a highly mobile air defense system for tactical operations. The Soviets have the world's largest force of combat surface ships, and this force is also being modernized. By 1977, Almost half of these ships are expected to be armed with surface-to-air or anti-ship missiles. Some of the anti-ship missiles have ranges of over 200 nautical miles and are very accurate.
they have been expanding their anti-submarine warfare capability by deploying the Moskva and Leningrad anti-submarine warfare cruisers, which carry about 20 helicopters and are armed with surface-to-air missiles. In 1973, the Soviets launched their first aircraft carrier, the Kiev class, which will probably go operational later this year. This carrier is expected to be equipped with a combination of helicopters and new fighters, having a vertical and short takeoff and landing capability. With regard to tactical aviation, the Soviets have been significantly improving the capabilities of their theater air forces by the rapid introduction of advanced tactical aircraft and improved munitions. The newer aircraft, specifically the late model fish beds, swing wing fitters, floggers and fencers, have substantially improved range, payload, avionics, and electronic countermeasure capabilities. These new aircraft already comprise a significant portion of the force, providing improved operational flexibility and efficiency. Naval and Air Force tactical air capabilities are complemented by several hundred blinder and badger medium-range bombers, many of which have long-range air-to-surface missiles for use against both land and sea targets. In an all-out nuclear war, any number of these medium bombers could be used on one-way missions against the United States. Utilization of the new backfire in a theater strike role would also greatly improve Soviet tactical and naval capabilities. The Soviets have a significant airlift capability using the AN-22, which can operate from semi-prepared surfaces and can transport bulky heavy equipment, such as mobile missiles and tanks. Their new long-range cargo transport, the IL-76, comparable to RC-141, entered the operational inventory in 1974. Complementing these aircraft is the AN-12, which is used for both strategic and tactical airlift. Follow-on replacements for the AN-12 and the AN-22 are expected to go operational in the 1980 to 1981 time period. 